Six months since the Taliban seized power and the killings and other human rights abuses have gone on multiplying. Women have been a major target, their peaceful protests broken up, some have been threatened, beaten and disappeared. The Taliban had promised an inclusive government, but not a single woman was appointed to the cabinet. My guest this week from Kabul is Shafiullah Azam, Taliban Director General of Economic Relations at the Foreign Ministry. Are you in the Taliban capable of anything more constructive than violence and repression? We are working on our police forces. Before, they were warriors for 20 years. But after that, they changed the role of warrior to, to the policeman. But what future are they building? Sources tell DW that the drug trade is booming and the Taliban is still taking its cut, as it has done for years. And will they crack down on some of the world's most dangerous terror groups? openly hosted in the country. Do they really believe they can play nice with Al-Qaeda and the West at the same time? That and much more on Conflict Zone. Shafiola Azam, welcome to Conflict Zone. Nice to be with you. The Taliban made a lot of promises when it seized uh, power last August, and they've broken a lot of them. Is there any reason why the world should trust anything they say these days? Uh, we know uh, Taliban made, uh, or Islamic Emirates made, uh, many promises. Uh, but based on their five or six uh, months experience, if we see uh, the changes, actually it's totally dramatical to not only to foreign, but as well to Afghans. And for 20 years, uh, money propaganda has been made against Islamic Emirate. But while they come to the power, and uh, they clearly show that to everyone, that these were rumors, fake news, and propaganda. All right, while Mr. Azam, to... let me just um, pick you up on that, because uh, you say they've been rightly in power for almost a year, almost half a year. The UN and other human rights bodies continue to release deeply disturbing reports of their human rights violations. Aren't you ashamed of that? Before this report, uh, a representative of UN had, has a, had a meeting with the inter minister, interior minister, and uh, they, they showed their satisfaction from security and to all members of UN. Uh, 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 as well, uh, in 6th uh, uh, February, we had a meeting with uh, UN all organizations, UCHA, UNAMA, and they showed their satisfaction from uh, current new government that they provided well security to all UN members. Well, and that apart, they from have UN access members, to apart from UN members, your officials claimed repeatedly there were amnesties for those who worked for the previous government. And yet the UN has revealed credible evidence that your fighters have gone on hunting down and killing those who've already surrendered. The UN said just two months ago that between August and November last year, they received evidence of more than 100 killings of former Afghan security personnel and others associated with the government. 72 of those killings attributed to the Taliban. In several cases, the bodies of those victims were publicly displayed. How do you justify those crimes? attributed directly to the Taliban? Uh, one thing should be considered that uh, since six months, or at least if we want to compare the situation, there should be some indicators to compare that with the previous. In a previous regime, each single day, we were losing around 300 Afghans in both sides. But That's not that, a fair comparison. Now, I'm talking now, what you've, about what I'm you've done since, since you came to power. I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that. Based on policy level, based on policy level, there is a clear amnesty to everyone. Yes, we can accept that. Now, we are not uh, uh, carrying heritage of 20 years war, but now, right now, we are uh, carrying heritage of 43-year war. Yes, in some cases, there would be some incidents of violation, but it doesn't mean it's a policy of the government. Government is following those cases, and everyone would be bring to the justice. So your fighters are out uh, of control. I, is this what you're telling me? Your fighters are out of control? No, 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 no. I can well, clearly say... Well, either you say ordered these killings, fight, or the fighters, fighters are out of control. Which is it? 
all fighters are under control. If there were not, we would be witness of hundreds of uh, killings in Afghanistan. You know better, in 20 years, many wrong things happened to everyone. There would be many uh, uh, private cases between different parties. But this is a shows commitment of the government. And uh, for the rest of these uh, violations, government have a full commitment and they will bring them to the justice. How do we know that? Listen How do we know that? Yeah. How do we know? We only have your word for that. As far as your justice is concerned, we have no idea. There's no uh, independent monitoring of that. So we only have your word for this. No, no. One thing is that uh, international community expectation is totally high. They are not considering the current situation. We are not living in a Western country that was uh, uh, calm for uh, hundreds of years. Still, we uh, move from a conflict zone to, to, the, to the peace, to the, to the stability. Yes, there would be some stability, but this is a positive point that government have a full commitment for that. And uh, still they have controlled many cases. Mr. Azam, uh, you're only years, being measured, you're only happen. being measured by the promises that you've made, not by any other standards, and you've broken a lot of those promises. As recently as last month, the United Nations reported credible allegations of illegal disappearances and said a growing number of the Taliban's political opponents are being detained, along with civil society representatives and people who voice dissent. Children are also being detained indefinitely. You think that's fair? You think that's just? Uh, 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 right now, if you see, if you compare the propaganda against Islamic Emirates, now we have uh, free press everywhere. Everyone has their own voices. Yes, in some cases, uh, there would be some investigation regarding something. One thing is clear, in every government, in every uh, country, there is a rule for freedom of speech, for protest, for everything. Everyone have a right to rise their voice and protest, but they should not disrespect value of the whole country, and they should not do an action to lead a country to destabilization. Stability for current government is a priority. We are giving, we are going toward stability to bring uh, security in our country and to, to the region and to international community. Yes, in some cases, in some cases, their government has a right to investigate from everyone, to, to, uh, to bring everyone to the justice. This is a right. But one thing is clear in policy level that Afghan current government is completely committed to the freedom of press, as they uh, mentioned recently, uh, they, they cleared their uh, statement. Just they requested from the media and for all uh, users of that. They Mr. Should Azam, consider you talk about you talk about the freedom of the press. Since August, more than six thousand journalists have lost their jobs. Eighty percent of female journalists are no longer working. You've closed more than forty percent of the media outlets in the country. Instead of press freedom, this looks as though you're scared of the truth. What makes you and the Taliban so scared of the truth? Mr. Sebastian, you are a person that you are completely aware from Afghan current situation. These journalists, which they have lost their job, this is not because the policy level or the policy of Let's Afghan look at the government. Policy. Let's look at the policy. We, we have your new journalism code. Media outlets are told they must prepare, quote, detailed reports in coordination with the government media and information center. Why? So you can censor the stories. Is that the aim? This coordination doesn't mean that they should uh, hide the realities. These coordination mean that everything should be based on rules and regulation, based on the rules of journalism. In some cases, in some cases, we have seen that many are making propaganda because of their personal interests to get asylum. Just uh, control on these issues is important for government and from everywhere. Right now, we are requesting from media and many other activities, just they should reflect what is real going in the ground, not what they are imagining. So for, you, you uh, show respect, fact, you fact. show respect, do you, for freedom of the press and for journalists? This, this wasn't on show last September when journalists covering demonstrations were rounded up and photos later showed the backs of two reporters covered with bruises and gashes from being whipped with cables by your thugs. Does that sound respectful to you? 
one thing should be clear, listen to me. Why you are uh, totally differentiate Afghan government from the other side of the other uh, countries? The same incident, same thing can happen as well in uh, Western country as well. We have many videos that how police of Western European countries, U.S., they are threatening women. They are Mr. Azam, we're so not totally talking about them. other countries. So, we're but talking the problem, about the problem, Afghanistan. The problem, the you can play the, the what about are... game indefinitely. What about Listen. other places? I'm talking to you about Afghanistan. That's if it. any behavior, if any behavior uh, is not suitable to be uh, done with the protesters or many other activists, it doesn't mean that we are happy. Government is happy on that. Yes, but in a ground, something ha can happen. And it's common everywhere. But the problem is why some TV channels, some uh, groups of countries, they, are, they made Afghanistan underwatch. They are broadcasting very small issues in a very wide manner. This is a problem. Let's come to, to the reality, to the ne neutrality. Consider current situation of every country. Based on that, make calculation against them. We're right talking, now, we're talking about so your country and the concerns being expressed at what is going on in your country from the highest level. The UN Secretary General said last month he remained extremely concerned about the fate of several women activists who have been abducted from their homes and have disappeared. No Afghan, he said, should live in fear of a knock at their door in the night, and no family should be left to wonder about the whereabouts and fate of their loved ones. But they are living in fear, aren't they? And creating that fear seems to have been your primary achievement over the last half year. Are, are you in the Taliban capable of anything more constructive than violence and repression? Because we've seen a lot of that from you. Uh, my point is this, that every comments or claims which is made on current government, just compare that to the previous government, which used NATO was here, and they were glorifying that we are uh, making uh, uh, good governance here. Compared to that... I know you want to talk about the other government, but we're talking about your government. That time as well. We're talking about your well. government. Right you, now, I know you right want now, to change right the now. subject. I, I, not, I not reject that, that there would be no mistake. Sure, everything can happen everywhere. But based on policy level, it's not the policy. Uh, the current government, within five, minute, five months, they control money, money better compared to the previous regime. This is achievement. No one is exposing this type of achievement. Just they are making criticize. In something, there would be some violations. We accept that. There is some uh, personal cases, some personal behavior. Uh, right now, we are working on our police forces. Before, they were warriors for 20 years. But after that, they changed the role of warrior to, to the policeman. Right now, every single day, if you ask from Kabul citizen or many other citizens uh, all over the country, there is a positive movement. We have many uh, progress in this situation. They provided well security to every Afghan, to foreigners, which they are here. It, it's it's uh, unacceptable to everyone compared to the propaganda. And, and, yes, and, and are, a lot of concern great. being expressed at high level, Mr. Azam. The UN sees a pattern in the Taliban's behavior. It talks of arbitrary arrests and detentions, as well as torture and ill treatment of civil society activists, journalists and media workers, along with former government and security forces personnel. That adds up to a pretty shameful record, doesn't it? Uh, this is not in a level that they are expressing that. In some cases, I accept that there would be uh, some problems, but it doesn't show the policy level. In some cases, there are some groups are making some videos. They are making some propagandas. I can give you an example of that. Right now, Afghan government didn't force no one, no woman to wear a burqa. They let them just, they say it as an advice that adjust yourself based on Islamic and Afghan value. But in some cases, some are coming, they are burning burqa. What does it mean? Actually, this is an act of destabilizing. They are, uh, they are uh, b b bring pressure on uh, police that to show Let me just make an this action point to you. and to make Let me just a propaganda make on you. that. You say nobody is being forced to wear the hijab or the burqa. That's simply not true. On February the 7th, General Mobin Khan, spokesman for your Kabul police said, 
It's not up to the people to say, we choose the coverings we like. No, you do what we prescribe, period. You do what we prescribe. And he added, the Taliban's patience is running thin. So, Mr. Azam, they are being forced and told what to wear, contrary to your uh, comfortable assurances. If it is right, right now ask from your reporters and they should see Kabul situation, other city situation. So why this is not a physical existence, what you are claiming? Actually, this is not a policy. Don't make an excuse of one person as a policy. Policy is totally different. Right now, Afghan government... He's a police spokesman for everyone. Kabul. He's a Kabul right now, police he's spokesman. Not police. He's not, he's a police spokesperson. Maybe because of uh, such claims, which is not representing policy of Afghan government. Policy makers or others, and there are others which are implementing the rules. Right now, uh, the, the situation which is provided within this fourth month, this is totally unexpected. And Afghan government is working to, uh, to regularize all activities to bring uh, that type of uh, facilities and services to Afghans, which they are in need of that, that meet their religious and cultural values. This is a very positive changes. And the Let's, women, and the women, I, I, the way women are being treated is not a positive change. The fact is they've become second class citizens, pushed around, forced to wear what you decide, study where you decide, work you where you decide, example? if at all. Can you give me an example? What gives you, what gives you the right? I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example, and I'll give you what the UN Secretary General said about this um, just last month. He said, women scientists, lawyers, and teachers are locked out, locked out, wasting skills and talents that will benefit the entire country. A generation of girls is seeing its hopes and dreams shattered. How does destroying the girls' hopes and dreams fit into your Islamic code? Please answer that. This is not correct, right? So now, the UN Secretary well, General doesn't girls, know what he's talking about. Is that it? Listen to me. I, I'm not talking about him. Let's, let's discuss about the fact. I requesting you do not rely only on reports. You can see the current reality which is going on right now. Uh, uh, university doors are open to to the girls. Why you and why you are not reflecting this positive signals? Right now in Jalalabad or in those areas which are uh, which have which have hot season. Right now, women are going there. Right now, male and men and women they are registering their names to the concourse, which is the entrance door to to the university. Right now, they are registering. Why you are not discussing about this? Right now, we have more than 15,000 women working only in health sector. Right now, women are working in, in our pass, passport directorate, in identity card directorate, in Kabul airport, or many other areas. Yes, there were some projects, some, uh, some other organizations. The, the only blame cannot refer to the Taliban. International donors, they had many uh, economic projects. They had many other projects. They cut their donation. Are Therefore, women going to be welcomed back to all the jobs they had before? No, there isn't even a women's ministry anymore because you closed that down. In many countries, there is no ministry for women. It doesn't mean that the current government ignoring them. Right now, before I give money example, in many ministries, in many organizations, they are doing work. They are providing services to male and women. There is no policy for that. Let's talk about the terrible food shortages, the humanitarian crisis facing your country, um, become a, what has become a daily nightmare for people trying to feed their families. It, it wasn't until the first week of this month that your first deputy prime minister called on government departments to present plans for tackling the crisis. What have you been doing for the last six months? Regarding humanitarian aids, there was a concern for many years that take over uh, uh, by coming Islamic Emirate, we will lose uh, values of or uh, 20 years achievements. Right now, Afghan government kept that system. They active. It's international community. They are ignoring the system. They are destroying. They are making a parallel system, All right, which is Mr. difficult for them, difficult Mr. for them to distribute the humanitarian assets or many others. Mr. Azam. They are ignoring banking system.
Mr. Azam, let's, let's talk about the enormous illegal drug trade in Afghanistan. The, the Taliban has warned that this huge criminal enterprise will have to stop. Does that also apply to the Taliban as well, since they've been cashing in on the drugs trade in parts of Afghanistan for a very long time? Are they going to stop trading in illegal narcotics as well? Come to, come to the policy. Right now, all narcotic uh, business or trades is going through our non-banking system. Right now, Afghan government is totally committed for re-establishing, supporting banking system. But I'm talking about the drug happen. business. I'm talking about the drug business. I'm asking whether your own fighters are going to stop dealing in drugs and taking taxes from it. Last year, a report to the UN Security Council said the production and trafficking of drugs remained the Taliban's largest single source of income. Again, how does that fit in with your Islamic principles? These reports were available as well about the previous government as well. But you can say the policy of Afghan current government in their previous period, which they have a government, how they brought that this business to zero. You're not right answering now, my question. Policy. You're not right answering my now, question. Right now, I can say the situation would be many, many better from a government which was uh, supported by, by U.S. NATO. I can clearly guarantee that. I can clearly guarantee. Now, right now, Afghan government is working to provide alternative to ag in agriculture sections. If international community really it's their concerns, they should support our agriculture section. There would be no business. There would be no uh, uh, harvesting of uh, narcotics. Policy can we, is can we, can if we also... If community real about their concern, they should support our agriculture Sector. Mr. Azam, can we expect the Taliban will also fail to keep its promise to prevent terrorist groups in your country from launching attacks outside Afghanistan? You're still very friendly with Al-Qaeda. Your two groups have even intermarried. Many of their leaders are based in Afghanistan and the border region. How exactly do you intend to prevent them launching attacks? Clear example is available. Uh, Compared to the previous report, always they were criticizing that more than 20 terrorist groups are active in Afghanistan. Actually, these groups rise and burn under U.S. NATO forces. But regarding uh, Daesh forces, while Ta uh, Islamic Emirates was at the same time in a fighting against previous Afghan regime, U.S. NATO forces, they proved, they proved that they eliminated Daesh from all over the country. This was Afghan government. This was international community. We're Money talking about Al-Qaeda. We're listen talking about Al-Qaeda. I clearly said, based on Doha agreement, Afghan current government, government have a full commitment. There would be no threats to Afghans. They will not allow every single group to make a threat to other countries. This is a full commitment. But this you allow them to train on your territory. You allow them to train on your territory. The UN report recently said that under your rule, these terrorists enjoy greater freedom in Afghanistan than at any time in recent history. And there are no signs you've taken steps to limit their activities. Why? Totally baseless. Totally incorrect. So they just don't I'm understand confused. what they're I'm talking confused. about. I'm confused about these uh, UN reports. While their representative are coming and they are discussing with our Ministry of Interior, Ministry of Defense. They are saying, well, security is provided, well, situation in everywhere. But on the other side, those reporters, I don't know who are there, uh, from where they are receiving this type of reports. Clearly, I can say this is the policy of current government. We want to make a stable country. Instead of conflict zone, we are going to, to the zone of national interest to the zone of economic interest. We want to reconnect a, a big project of our neighbors and regional. This is the policy. At the same time with this policy, we cannot support uh, those groups which are making threats to others. Yes, there are many heritage from 20 years. Afghan government is fighting against them and we will provide a secure environment for all investors. You want, you want a secure people. environment, you want a secure environment and a stable country by hosting some of the most dangerous terrorist groups in the world. 
You think the West is going to watch you and expect you to play nice with those terrorist groups and with them at the same time? You really think the West's going to accept that? That's totally rejected by Afghan government. They called on them to please, in case, in, uh, in, instead of blaming, making excuse, provide a, a proof to the government. Based on that, if government didn't take action, they can claim on that. All right. Still, said for 20 to 30 years, there was a huge propaganda against Afghan government. Let's, if we want to have a stable country and and to not be a threat to, to the neighbor, to the region and country, let's support Afghan government. They have a good plan for region, for Afghanistan. Main focus is economic development in Afghanistan. Let's support, let's give a chance. All right, Shafiul Azam, thanks very much for being on Conflict Zone. Thank you, appreciate your time. It's my pleasure, thank you so much.